efficient market hypotheses. Well, financial security prices cannot be predicted. Ultimately, what everybody wants to do is to predict returns, predict prices. So what would be the point of investing in a stock that's not going to go up? Everybody wants to find that stock that actually is going to go up, and we want to invest in it and turn our $1 into a million dollars and live happily thereafter. So is it possible to predict, uh, and is it possible to avoid bad stocks and always choose the best stocks? So efficient market hypotheses simply argues that stock prices reflect all available information for everyone. Historically, we believe in uh, returns, daily returns, to have a random walk, meaning tomorrow's price um, compared to today is a random um, event. So think of it this way. Stock prices go up and down based on the information that's available to us. Price goes up because we believe that the price has a um, some sort of positive news, some sort of event that would impact their earnings per share, and therefore we are willing to pay more for that company. Uh, stock price can go up because we believe that everybody will be buying that stock, and therefore the stock is going to go up. Stock price can go up based on no information whatsoever. It can even go up on information that's bad, but for instance, let's say that we want to, you know, the market is going down and everybody's selling, but we want to park our money in some stock. So we might end up investing in a stock where we consider it to be a safe haven. And therefore, when everything is going down, stock price, a specific stock price, may actually end up going up. So the random walk argues that it is impossible to predict what's going to happen to a stock price from day one to the day two, uh, stock return. So is it really possible to predict prices um, or predict returns uh, of individual stocks? So why is it that we believe that prediction fails? Why is it that financial theory argues that it's not possible to predict future returns? I mean, after all, we have our expectations. Uh, for instance, you know, I like Apple products. I use uh, you know, iPad, iPhone, iWatch, and you know, Mac and all that. And it looks like a very nice company. They have very nice earnings, good sales, you know, it has a very strong uh, customer base. So I think it's going to go up. However, I may be wrong. So if everybody believes that the stock price is going to go up, can we actually start buying this and so therefore cause it to go up? If you believe that the company is bad, and if everybody believes that the company is bad, everybody starts selling the company, not including that company in their portfolio, would it, would it cause the company price to go down? If they are so obvious, why is it that the prediction actually fails? So the argument is very, very simple. A stock price actually reflects all information that is currently available. So we already have the information, the news, everything to know about the company. We already acted on it. We already bought and sold and set the equilibrium price of the stock based on this available information. This is what the market efficiency argues. We do not delay. We may overreact. We may underreact. This is all behavioral. However, after all said and done, stock price is set and we now have the equilibrium price. That's your efficient market hypothesis. So efficient market hypothesis claims that no trading rules would work consistently. So think of it like this. If we believe that a certain rule will persist, that there is some way to predict the future prices, the equilibrium is not set, there's some information that somebody missed and we found it and we started trading on it and we start making money with it. Is it possible? Of course it is. Notice, of course it is. But the idea is that if everybody can find this, then you're going to have everybody trading this information and it's, it will become part of the overall information that's available to everybody and then the price will reflect this one as well. Meaning, or again, if there is a tiny bit of information 
that the entire market missed, be that a, a trading rule, be that a technical analysis signal, be that a fundamental event, be that an insider information, some sort of information that the market missed. So somehow the current price does not reflect this piece of information. And somebody started trading on this. Well, the market would notice, and then they will start trading on this as well. And the information become, will, would become public, and everybody would start trading this public information, and the new price would reflect this overlooked signal, overlooked information, and it will become public knowledge. And therefore, even though there may be slight information that was overlooked by the market, there may be, it will not survive for long. And the efficient market hypothesis says that the market will be very quick to react. Even though there could be overreactions and underreactions, the overall price reaction will be prompt. And it will be to the point that no one will have any advantage over the others based on what's available to everybody. So the weak form simply argues there are three types of th three forms of market efficiency, weak, semi-strong, and as strong. With a weak form, we basically argue that by looking at a graph or, you know, we, or, or technical analysis or so, we cannot predict future prices. Simply, there are so many algorithms now, people looking at this, robots looking at this, uh, algorithms looking at this, and, and therefore, just looking at historic patterns, we cannot predict future prices. It's just, you know, even if there is a slight technical analysis indications out there and, and everybody overlooked it, it would just probably be a couple of trades before the next algorithm notices your trade and um, the next market uh, dealer notices your trade and therefore you just become uh, part of the overall information and your um, upper hand will be lost in, in, in seconds, in a couple of trades. So that's your weak form. Most equity markets are considered to have at least the weak form. It's really hard to find a graph or some sort of technical price pattern and, and repeat that pattern into future and try to predict future prices. Semi-strong form argues that charts and also include financial fundamental analysis. Now, all this information is public. Everybody's reading the 10Ks and the 10Qs and income statements and the balance sheets, and there's significant analysis. There's more data available to us. So everybody looks at this data, and based on this, people start to make predictions. It's really hard to miss individual slight um, packages of news or information to the point that they would actually give us an advantage over the others so that we could predict the returns and basically make money with this. That's your semi-strong form. You simply say that you can't look at prices, you can't look at technical analysis, you can't look at public information and predict future prices. The prices will reflect all of this. And even if you have information as such, it won't survive for long and it will become the part of that equilibrium price. The strong form market efficiency argues or includes even the inside information. Well, the, this is kind of obviously very hard to test. However, you know, the argument usually is that if there is inside information for anybody to uh, make money on this, they have to trade. And once they trade, information will become public. So I would assume that the strong form over the semi-strong or the weak form, the main idea is the time frame of that data's survival. If we have information that is inside and that's privileged, um, we have to act on it in order for it to make us a profit. And once we act on it, that information will be released. At least the implication of the information will be revealed to the market and therefore market will, will respond. And the inside information's implication and, and, and the privileged data or, or trade will not survive for long. And therefore strong form efficiency will hold. 
most equity markets are considered to be semi-strong form and definitely the weak form. So that's uh, the basic idea behind the uh, market efficiency. So which form of uh, efficient market hypotheses do we have? Again, most markets will have semi-strong form. Can we test this? Well, there are many different ways of testing it, and I included a, a very simple day of the week effect, where Monday to Friday, the prices will be different. Now, this is based on behavioral finance, and historically, we thought that there could be some sort of uh, Monday return or a Friday return that is significantly different than the other day, days of the week. Meaning, on Mondays, we might actually be um, requiring a higher return, and Fridays, we might be requiring a, a, a lower return than any other weekday. Now, if the market efficiency holds, there should be no difference from one day to the other, because if there was, then people would be trading this away. Meaning, if Monday was to give you a higher return, then you would simply trade on Mondays and no other day. And if everybody starts trading on a Monday, there would not be no um, significant Monday return surviving. If Friday was a bad day, then nobody would trade on a Friday, and therefore Friday would become a no trade day, or so much so that everybody would start taking advantage of this until Friday return becomes equal to the other days. So we test this with a simple regression. And we find that neither Monday or Friday have any statistically significant values, returns, uh, with no, almost no R squared, which means that even though they have positive signs, they are statistically insignificant, meaning that trading on a Monday or a Friday is statistically indifferent. Even though behaviorally, there may be nuanced differences between Mondays and Fridays, um, you know, Mondays, it's, it's a, the first day of the week. People are not as happy. Fridays, well, it's a good day. Thank God it's Friday. And, and trade, it, it may have implications for, for, for trading. Everybody wants to open new positions on Monday mornings. And everybody wants to close their positions by Friday afternoon. Um, and, and this may actually end up becoming uh, some sort of a trading or tradable pattern, tradable uh, strategy but it turns out that it has no implication for returns or predicting stock prices, and therefore the efficient market hypothesis holds. So this is our uh, simple discussion, uh, a little bit on a um, basic level of emerging um, of efficient market hypotheses, and obviously your textbook will have significantly more, more detail on this. So thank you.